they will say that I have shed innocent blood. What's blood for, if not for shedding? With my hook for a hand, I'll split you from your groin to your gullet. Eraserhead. Eraserhead is a film directed by David Lynch, starring Jack Nance, Charlotte Stewart, and Alan Joseph. Where the fuck do I start with this movie? Okay. Uh, so, I have never heard of David Lynch before watching this movie. Um, I know he had a show called Twin Peaks that was very popular. Um, and he had a couple movies. He had like maybe five, six movies as well. Uh, I had no idea who this guy was. I had no idea this movie existed. Um, I stumbled upon this trying to, you know, find some, you know, some of the most disturbing movies. And um, now that I've seen this movie, without a doubt, I can say that this is my favorite horror film and film of all time. Like, there's no debate in it. The, I can barely even begin to explain this movie without getting into any type of spoilers, okay? But from what I piece together, movie is about a man. Um, you don't know where this film takes place. You don't know if this is the future. You don't know if this entire movie is a metaphor. You don't know if this entire movie is in his mind and we're just seeing the world through the way he perceives it. Or you don't know if this is a fucking nightmare, if this is purgatory. We don't have any clue or idea uh, where the fuck this movie takes place But it's essentially about a guy He's um, pretty much on vacation from work And he has a bunch of time to himself So we just follow this guy for like a good maybe 10 minutes of the film No dialogue, nothing um, The scene opens up It's basically like him just in space And you see like this planet That's kind of transparent Going behind his head And then coming out of it I guess to symbolize that we are in a, this is his world, I guess. Um, there's some weird, creepy guy looking out of a window down at the main character. Um, and he has these levers that he's pulling. And then we see this weird spermazoid uh, creature thing kind of transparent as well, uh, like float out of his mouth while it's open. And then you see this weird, the camera zooms in to basically like this hole on the planet. And then the movie starts and then following this guy for 10 minutes no dialogue essentially it's this guy who uh gets a, his neighbor lets him know that uh there's a girl, a girl called for him and he's expected to be at dinner so very awkwardly she lets him know this very awkwardly he says oh yeah and then the scene <laughs> the scene cuts and then he goes to this house very awkwardly, this girl staring out the window at him. She finally opens it up and she's like, I didn't think you would come. And he's like, I don't even think you wanted me to show up. Where have you been? You never come around. And she just stares at him awkwardly. He goes into the house. He meets the, the family and there's some weird shit, very weird shit that goes on. I want to talk about it because I want to get into spoilers. But essentially, they let him know, look, um, you got our daughter pregnant. You're going to marry her and take care of this baby, right? So he's like, yeah. And the wife's the girlfriend's crying. She's like, are you sure you don't mind? And he's like, no, I don't. So before that, the, the, the girl, after the mother tells him, you know, she got her daughter knocked up. She tells him, she's like, they don't even know if it's a kid or a boy or anything. They don't know what it is. And you're in the head kind of like, what? Like, they don't know what it is. We don't even know if it's a baby didn't you give birth to it? And she did. So they go home and the baby is this weird reptilian demonic lizard snake baby thing. That's basically like a, a neck with a head. It looks like kind of like a dinosaur. And then the rest of the body is just like goo wrapped up in bandages. And they're just leaving it like on the ta on a table and they're taking care of it. The baby just cries a lot at mules. It's not even like a normal crying. It's just like, nyeh, nyeh. it's really annoying. So mom, the mom can't handle it. She had enough of it. Basically, we're dealing with this guy take care of this child that he didn't even know he had or that he didn't know that he wanted. That is very, very weird. 
And as the movie progresses, it doesn't flow like a normal movie. It, it's essentially this shit plays like a nightmare. There's no structure to your dreams. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that's exactly what David Lynch, the director, was going for. Uh, this, this, the the soundtrack. It has this eerie, like, like wind that's constantly blowing throughout the film. That's it has really, really graphic, practical effects. And for some reason, the thing is pretty much the staple of what the what good practical effects can accomplish. Practical effects in the thing still hold up to the de today. Like they still hold up to today, the and they look even they look even way better than uh, the the prequel remake that they made with nothing but CGI. Not even close. Two different movies. It, it basically the, the the thing with the CGI basically is like Dead Space, the video game, and. The Thing, John Carpenter's The Thing is legit still terrifying to this day and looks absolutely fucking creepy because the shit was actually there. They're looking at something. It wasn't some invisible CGI monster that, you know, it, it, it was it was actual creation that somebody made so much. He put so much work into those practical effects that he had to be hospitalized because of his work ethic was just ridiculous and it was affecting his health. But the practical effects of this fucking demon lizards baby is so disturbing and it looks so fucking real it's almost hard to believe that this film came out when it did because the practical effects are just that fucking good um i love everything about this film from the non-linear storyline all the way to the structure of it to the way that it functions like a nightmare that there's weird sequences that happen that that completely take you out of any type of reality you thought the film was set in it took this man 10 years to make this movie this was his first film 10 years the main character wears his wore his hair like that for 10 years to finish this movie he was a student when he made it so he didn't have the a right right amount of money to f complete the movie at the time so what he did was he he also he was paying these people as a, as a student. He's a student paying the people in this film as much money as he could. Just that's that's just how how dedicated he was to getting this film created. So this is completely absolutely 100% this man's vision without any interference at all. Without any fucking interference. And at the time this film came out, it was so disturbing that this this film is like a landmark and i'm surprised that i've never heard about it until i decided to go fishing through youtube because this film is amazing uh, uh th this film is amazing a hundred percent um from the cinematography it's in black and white throughout the entire film there's no color at all and i think that really adds to to the the overall feel of this film this film is I don't, it's amazing. It's hard to explain. It's hard to put it into words. What the fuck I just watched. But this, Jack Nance, the, the performances are incredible. Um, the neighbor is actually Judith Roberts, which who played the, the um, Mary Shaw in Dead Silence. She looks beautiful. You, I didn't, I, she, she had this look about her that was just kind of ominous and weird throughout this entire film. And then I finally looked her up as the actor and found out well, did she play Mary Shaw? So subconsciously, my head was in my head. I had not the image of her, but the feeling when you seen her, I got when I seen her in this film. And she looks nothing like how she did as Mary Shaw. But uh, this this movie is a fucking ride. It is a head trip. It gets intense toward, it gets very, very intense. It's kind of a slow burn, but the movie's so bizarre from opening frame to the ending, I wouldn't even call it a slow burn because it's it's engaging since the film starts all the way to the finish. And there's there's barely any dialogue in here, but when there is, it's so fucking awkward. Like imagine imagine just being around nothing but socially awkward people who don't really know how to effectively communicate or display emotions. We're talking about shots where Somebody says something to the main character, he responds and they smile and just stare at him with their open mouth for like four minutes. Like really, really fucking uncomfortable. But at the same time, hilarious because you you, you can't believe what you're seeing with this film. I, it's, it's very hard to put this shit into words how amazing this movie is. 
After I watched it the first time, I did a review and had to delete it because I just couldn't grasp, I couldn't find out how to review this movie without explain, without spoiling it. And, and I don't know, D uh, David Lynch is a fucking genius. That's all I have to say. He's a genius. I don't even need to see his other works. I'm just convinced anything that he's fucking made is amazing because this movie is that great. After I seen this the first time, I watched this shit seven more times through a period of four days just because of how fucking bizarre it is and just because I wanted to try to piece it together. But you can't. David Lynch, the director, he doesn't tell anybody what it means. He said nobody has ever came to him and gave him the meaning in which he intended when he created this film. Nobody. There's a bunch of theories on YouTube of people who have ideas, but nobody truly knows what this film is about. And that is part of its mystique. That's what makes it so damn amazing because you know there's a, there's, there's a simple story there, a simple narrative structure. A guy finds out he has a baby. He tries to take care of it. He's not ready for it. The stress of it becomes too much. And then we get into the climax where, where I, <laughs> the climax of the film. Basically, it's about just not being ready to take care of a child on the surface level, on, on the, the most minimal scale of explaining this movie. That's essentially what it's about. A man taking care of a child that he's not ready for. That's meant that, and, and there's a lot of theories about the child is not really the way that it looks in the movie, but that's the way that he perceives it. But then again, we don't know because this movie also looks like it takes place in a dystopian future where a lot of the world was destroyed by a nuclear holocaust. So maybe the child really does look like that. Maybe it's an effect of the radiation. Who knows? Nobody knows. Anybody who tells you they know is full of shit because if David Lynch doesn't confirm it, then it's bullshit. And, and, and the, the, there's barely gore in it but when there is gore, it is extremely disturbing, very disturbing, um, <laughs> especially the ending. And, and that scene that I showed you, I don't know what it is, but that scene with that woman singing with the blowfish and dry plaster on her cheeks. I don't know why it is so mesmerizing. I, this this fucking song has been in my head almost every day since I've seen it. I don't know what it is. It's just just stuck in my head. I can't be the only one. I've seen a couple of reviews. A lot of people said the same shit. I don't know why, but that song is just so dis it, it, it's disturbing that this woman and his radiator just starts singing this creepy ass song saying in heaven, everything is fine. And the lyrics tie in to, to something that towards the end that I don't want to spoil. You have to just experience this movie yourself. The acting, grade A. The gore in it, there's not a lot, but when there is, it is effective. Um, this this movie has the highest grade that I think I will ever give anything. And this is a fucking, this is an 11 out of 10 for me. I don't know what it is about this movie, but it is amazing. It is, I can't explain it. It's, it's, it's a beautiful film. It's a beautiful masterpiece. I'm, I'm breathless, breathless. It is intense, it's thrilling, it is is dreadful, it's it's beautiful, it's mesmerizing, it's hypnotic, it is disturbing, unnerving, it's it's amazing. This film is amazing. Um I don't want to give away any spoilers with this film. I just want you to watch this and experience this yourself. And when you do watch it, Please come back to this video and I want to hear what you guys got from it. And then I'll release another video a uh, video later explaining this film, which is also going to be another show that I'm going to add to this channel. Basically, uh, uh, my explanation of certain films like, you know, of, uh, of, of, of The Witch or some films that people just didn't get. You know, The Witch is a pretty simple story, but a lot of people were just confused, didn't get it. A lot of people were confused with The Lighthouse, didn't get it. A lot of people were confused with Hereditary and didn't get it. Uh, Midsommar. So... Um, yeah, go fucking see this movie. This is highly recommended. Fucking 11 out of 10. I'm telling you, you will not be disappointed. Go see it. Go support it. Go buy it. Please buy this damn film. Please do, because it is a hidden gem that needs to be discovered and seen by people who love horror films, by horror enthusiasts, and by people who review 
horror movies because this film, I'm just speechless. But yeah, like I said, this is the Dread Lord. Go ahead, or the Dread Emperor, and go ahead and follow me on Patreon. Become a uh, become a Dread Lord. Subscribe to my channel and just help me build this so I can overall get better equipment to make these films. And um, yeah, see you later. Peace. I was always daddy's little girl. What about you? Are you still his little girl, Beverly? <laughs> <laughs>